Men have evolved to spread the seed with that enormous junk that we possess. So I was watching this motivational video with Hathor Bjornsson, the mountain from Game of Thrones. And he was talking about how he hasn't seen his daughter in near three years or something like that. And I came to think about paternity and what it really means for men. So I wanted to make this video to clarify some stuff and make sure that you really understand what it means to be a father. Your role in this continuation of lineage. And I'm just gonna... I want to be honest about, about this right, right, right now. Um, I actually haven't seen my daughter in three years. Like, um, I haven't physically, see, like, I haven't been able to hug, hug my daughter for three, three years. And that's the hardest thing I've, I've gone through. It's very really hard to, to talk about it. And the hardest thing is there's nothing I can do. I, sometimes you, you're put into difficult positions. And that's life. It's very unfair. And as you can see from this video, he was sincerely sad. I wanted to make sure that I'm not trying to undermine his emotions. And I mean that he really feels in that way. But we have to talk about the fact that, that a grown man, a huge specimen, human being, is crying on a camera. And yet again, I'm not trying to shame him, but I wanted to dig deeper to what it means. We hear this all the time, that men should express their emotions and be in touch with their inner, deeper feelings. But the fact of the matter is that if you do that, you will be perceived as a weak person. And I'm not saying that as something subjective. This is how we perceive men showing weakness. And I will explain this phenomenon as we go in this video. If any of you men watching this have had some dating experience, you know that showing weakness in that manner never really seemed to be to your advantage. Yes, of course, if you're a teenager and you have this high school sweetheart, that'll work for some years. But after some time, when you mature more, your girl starts to understand things a little bit better, she'll grow tired of you. And this is not about dating only. It's also about leadership. People won't follow weak individuals. And yet again, when I'm saying weak, I am not trying to dehumanize that person. I'm merely pointing out how we perceive emotions from different perspectives, whether you are a man or a woman. And of course, I have a video on how men and women emote differently. You can check that one here. Basically, when it comes to the case of Hafthor Bjornsson, it's all about social programming. We have been programmed since childhood to emote in the same way as women do. So it becomes this mixture of nonsense, people behaving in the same way, regardless of gender. I have mentioned in several videos that men and women have different sexual imperatives, which means that men and women have different strategies in how to procreate. Men have evolved to spread the seed with that enormous junk that we possess. And women have evolved to find a one great specimen to procreate with. And before doing that, she has to test him and make sure that he is the real deal. A strong male specimen that she perceived him to be from the first moment that she laid her gaze upon him. Not for so long ago, we humans haven't been monogamous. Monogamy is a social construction and has been created to ensure stability of society's development so that no chaos breaks loose through bastardizing children left and right. So when men commit to an exclusive relationship, we abandon our sexual strategy. That's right. You are giving up your sexual imperative to feel like a part of society, a civilized one. So decade after a decade being indoctrinated into believing that men should emote in the same way as women. Fathers have become similar to mothers. They carry out their parental instinct in the same way as women do. That includes this case with Hathor Bjornsson, where he cries because he hasn't seen his child for such a long time. And the part that got me irritated even more is the part where he felt shame. 
He feels ashamed to be a bad father because he is not present with his daughter. But the reality is, being a man, you have to sacrifice something to build a greater future. Not just for yourself, but for your offspring. And as we all know, he does it with great mastery. He is a true man's man when it comes to pursuing his purpose and leaving behind the legacy. But when it comes to parenthood, he shouldn't be ashamed for doing what is righteous for him. And with that, I wanted to shed light upon the situation of young men when they're shamed into love and marriage because they're constantly nagged upon not having any family, not having any children, and in reality, they're too young to do that. They haven't accomplished anything. What can a 25-year-old man provide for a family without having any stable income or any purpose to follow for that? As men were programmed since childhood to want a marriage, to want kids. Heck, even my own mother has been nagging me. I would like you to have children. We'll see when you're a father yourself. You'll understand me better. But she doesn't realize that she speaks from a perspective of a woman. I'm not her. I don't emote in the same way. The reason why I talk about masculinity and femininity for that matter so much on this channel because it's very important to embrace what you are. In that sense, you will maximize the total gain of what you can achieve in this life and how much you can impact and inspire others. That's it. That's all about humans in this life. And with that note, I dare to say that masculine men don't have same parental instincts as women do. And we don't care about having children for the same emotional purpose as women do. Men are rushed into family life because women don't have a lot of time to carry out their biological imperative of procreation. So it becomes this catering of the whole generation, doing the stuff that would benefit the society as a whole. Let me be crystal clear. I'm not blaming anyone. And this channel is never about denouncing your own responsibilities for your life situation. My plan is to merely tell you how societal structures are constructed and help you to navigate in life with a clearer vision. The time frame of getting a baby is much more narrow for women than it is for men. A woman has to make up her mind about living a legacy quite early on in her life, maybe even in 20s. But for a man, that time frame is much longer. We can make babies, heck, even when we are in our 60s or even 70s, 80s. But that doesn't suit the general narrative. You have to understand one important thing. Men prefer reasoning before emotions, whereas women prefer emotions before reasoning. That's a critical distinction between men and women and the choices that we make in life. A man's role as a parent is wisdom, skills, guidance, mentorship. Women provide love, nurture, warmth, whereas men provide the pragmatic tools to tackle this damn life. Biological roles of men and women in a child's life are totally opposite, but society preaches the same narrative for both genders. Men and women work same jobs. Men and women do same home chores. You know what? I pushed the stroller yesterday. Today, it's your turn. You see what I'm saying? This is a total bullshit. We're no androids created in a factory to act in totally same way. There has to be polarity to every relationship. Masculinity and femininity are created to complete each other, not to be the same. And yet again, I don't mean that a man should act like a cyborg towards his child and show no affection. I just mean that you as a father has certain missions to carry out if you want to see your offspring to be as successful as possible in this life. So what is it that I'm trying to convey with this video? What's the purpose of this video? This video is to reach out to men who have been thinking about this stuff and tell them to not stress about not feeling in the way that everybody else telling them to feel. To open eyes to what paternity really means from an evolutionary perspective. To embrace the nature, to see things from a different angle. To aim to build greatness and not sell themselves short under societal pressure. My point is, Hathor is being a great father and he shouldn't be ashamed for not being present with his child for the moment being because he is doing 
all the great things to ensure that child's safety and security in the long run. What's your opinion on this matter? Leave the comment down below. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and I'll talk to you soon. Hossein, out.